Hi, everybody, and welcome back to POCUS Cases. In this month's screencast, we are going to talk about one of the best indications and probably one of the most underutilized indications of POCUS, and that is to look for small bowel obstructions. This is definitely in my top 10 list of most useful POCUS skills for an ER physician to have. Let's look at this case. A 55-year-old male presents with vomiting, abdominal distension, and diffuse abdominal pain. He was seen at another hospital 24 hours ago with similar symptoms. At the other hospital, he was given IV antiemetics and IV analgesics and had an x-ray that was read by the radiologist as normal. So he was sent home. His symptoms continued, so he returned back to the emergency department the following day. He had no fevers, no diarrhea, no chest pain, no shortness of breath, no testicle pain, no travel history, and no diet changes. In terms of his past medical condition, he has had one previous abdominal surgery. Three years ago, he had his appendix removed. Initially, it was laparoscopic, but then it was converted to open. In terms of his vitals, they're pretty benign. Temperature 37.2, heart rate 95, respirate 20, oxygen saturation 98%, and his blood pressure 150 over 90. From a physical exam standpoint, normal heart sounds and normal breath sounds. His abdomen, as you can see in the picture, is quite distended, dull to percussion, and he has generalized abdominal tenderness. Although on a scale of one to 10, he says it's quite mild, maybe three or four out of 10. No peritoneal findings, no flank pain, and he had a normal testicle exam. Now, I know what everyone is thinking. This is obviously a small bowel obstruction, and that you would expect his x-ray to look like this. This would obviously con confirm a small bowel obstruction. However, in this case, his x-ray looked like this. And in fact, when we got the radiologist to read the x-ray, the radiologist said, well, it's non-specific bowel gas pattern with gas seen, out through, seen throughout the colon all the way through to the rectum. A mild volume of fecal material was seen, but there's no evidence of obstruction or perforation. And this brings me to the limitations of x-rays. X-rays really have a sensitivity of only 46.2% and 66.7% specificity, and that's when they're diagnostic. And the sad part is x-rays are only diagnostic 36% of the time. So in my opinion, if you're ordering x-rays for a bowel obstruction, you're, you're really flipping a coin in terms of whether or not it's gonna be helpful or not. Half the time it might be helpful, determining yes, determining no. The other half, it might not be helpful. It might mislead you. So I don't find it a very high yield test. Now let's take a look at this study by Jang et al. done in 2011. They determined two features that would help determine if a bowel obstruction was present on POCUS. The first feature was absence or decreased peristalsis. I generally just call this abnormal peristalsis, and that's usually defined as back and forth movement of bowel contents within the bowel lumen. If you see this on your POCUS in the right clinical setting, it has a specificity of 97.7%. Another feature is dilated small bowel loops. The measurement they give to determine dilation is if there's any small bowel loops that are dilated more than 2.5 centimeters. If this is seen, it has a specificity of 83.7%. Let's see what that looks like. This is an image generated by a curvilinear low frequency probe that's placed over the abdomen. Here is one loop of vowel, and here is another loop of vowel. Generally, when you put the probe on an abdomen of a normal patient, usually small bowels are collapsed and barely noticeable on the POCUS screen. In this case, they are prominent on the screen and echogenic material are seen within the image. Here's an example of abnormal peristalsis. When I play the video, you're gonna see 
that within those loops of bowel, you can see echogenic material. In healthy patients, the echogenic material should only move in one direction. However, as you can see in this patient's POCUS video, the echogenic material is moving back and forth. This is a possible finding of a small bowel obstruction in the right clinical contents. If you look at that echogenic material, you can see first it's moving to screen right in the lower bowel loop and then to screen left. And as I play the video on a loop, you'll see it go back and forth between right and left. Clearly it's not moving in one direction. This is the bowel being measured. I measure from echogenic wall to echogenic wall. If it is greater than 2.5 centimeters, it's considered dilated in the right clinical context consistent with a small bowel obstruction. Here, the bowel is dilated at 2.85 centimeters. Here is another patient with a POCUS showing multiple dilated small bowel loops. And when I play the video, you'll see that there is also abnormal peristalsis as there's back and forth movement of the echogenic material within the bowel loops. This is another feature of a small bowel obstruction that was not mentioned in the Jang paper. This is something called the keyboard sign. As the small bowel loops dilate, you may see that finger-like projections are coming off the wall of the small bowel. Some people say they look like keys on the keyboard, thus giving the name keyboard sign. They are, in fact, plica circularis and are present on pocus in conditions where the small bowel dilates and is fluid-filled. Now, some of you are saying, Hey, Rob, I work in a resource-rich tertiary healthcare center where I can get a CT scan done on anyone I suspect has a small bowel obstruction 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Why would I use pocus for determining small bowel obstruction? Well, check out this paper. It came out in 2018, and it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. What it shows, in 11 studies comprising 1,178 patients, ultrasound has a sensitivity of 92.4% and a specificity of 96.6%. The positive likelihood of ultrasound is 27.5, and the negative likelihood ratio is 0.08. They concluded that the literature suggests ultrasound is in fact comparable to CT for determining small bowel obstruction, and that ultrasound may save time and radiation exposure for determining small bowel obstruction. So there are definitely advantages for using an ultrasound to determine if a small bowel obstruction is present, and it may rival the ability of CT scan to determine if a small bowel obstruction is present. Now, I don't want people to think that I'm advocating POCUS replace CT scan. CT scans may in fact find other helpful features such as the cause of the small bowel obstruction, transition points, and alternative diagnoses better than an ultrasound. But what I would recommend is considering sparing CT in a patient who is a recurrent obstructor who has had multiple CTs in the past and the x-rays, if you still do those coin toss tests, are not definitive. In a recurrent obstructor who has clinical findings of a small bowel obstruction and POCUS showing features of a small bowel obstruction, in my opinion, that is enough to initiate treatment and contact the appropriate consulting service without any further imaging tests. As always, I would like to give a few words of caution before getting too excited about small bowel obstruction POCUS. First, there are false positives. Not every dilated bowel loop or abnormal peristalsis is going to be a small bowel obstruction. In my experience, I have seen people with gastroenteritis or diarrhea have abnormal peristalsis. Also, patients with an ileus can have keyboard signs, as can any other illness that dilates your bowel. The way to be safe is to use common sense and always match the clinical picture to the POCUS. If the patient is not having abdominal distension, vomiting, or abdominal pain, but you see dilated bowel loops or back and forth peristalsis, it can be many things other than a small bowel obstruction.
In other words, if things don't fit, rethink the diagnosis or get more tests to confirm the diagnosis. Second, you need to look everywhere. Most people think that bowel will only be present in the center of the abdomen. However, in my experience, I have found bowel hiding all over the abdomen in places I don't commonly find it when looking in textbook pictures at bowel. Ensure that before you stop looking for a bowel obstruction with your pocus probe, you have interrogated the pericolic gutters, pelvis, epigastric area, right and left upper quadrants looking for bowel. So in summary, POCUS can be helpful to determine if a patient has a small bowel obstruction. Things like peristalsis with the back and forth motion of stool, dilated bowel loops more than 2.5 centimeters, and the keyboard sign are all features that can help determine if a small bowel obstruction is present on POCUS. Next, POCUS is much better than x-rays, and studies suggest it is as good as CT scans for determining small bowel obstruction. In your recurrent obstructors, if your approach is to just get an abdominal x-ray, it might actually be faster to put the ultrasound probe on and look for features of small bowel obstruction on your POCUS in order to make your decision. It's more sensitive, more specific, and potentially f as good as a CT scan. Finally, when looking for small bowel obstructions, you got to remember that bowel can hide in the abdomen and you need to look everywhere. Common areas such as the pericolic gutters and the pelvis are frequently missed when people are looking for small bowel obstructions. As always, you can email me if you have any questions. Also, feel free to email me suggestions for further cases, and I strive to answer all emails in a timely manner and love hearing from my audience.